It wasn't easy to make the meal of the Asinti, the grass that was the ancient precursor to mace. Each cob was shorter than your little finger and harbored only about twelve kernels encased in rock-hard sheaths. But in the dramatic example of the power of domestication, Beginning some 9,000 years ago people in Mexico and the U.S. Southwest transformed the Asante into the many kernel maize that today feeds hundreds of millions around the world. Researchers had already identified a handful of genes involved in this transformation. Now, Studies of ancient DNA by two independent research groups show what was happening to the plant's genes mid-domestication, about 5,000 years ago. The snapshot reveals exactly how the genetics changed over time as generations of people selected plants with their preferred traits. These results sharpen the focus of what we know at this early period, says Michael Blake, an anthropologist at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada, who was not involved in the work. They have implications for understanding later developments in mace domestication and help us to see what people were selecting for at the time. The first glimpses of mace domestication came in the 1960s, when a steamed U.S. archaeologist Richard McNee Ish excavated at caves in Mexico's Tehuacan Valley, a center of early Mesoamerican agriculture. In the dry, dark environment there, he found tiny well-preserved maize cobs dated to roughly 5,300 years ago and harboring only 50 kernels each, compared with the 1,000 on modern cobs. Nearly 60 years later, after the advent of modern sequencing tools, Geneticist Jean Philippe Yale Calzada at the Center for Research and Advanced Studies of the National Laboratory of Genomics for Biodiversity in Irapuata, Mexico, and his colleagues wanted to find out which genes the ancient domesticators had unwittingly been selecting. But he worried that many ish specimens, now in museums, might have been damaged by handling or improper storage. So he and his team decided to go back to the caves in Tehuacan Valley. McNee Ish had died, but one of his former students, Angel Garcia Cook, served as guide. He had all the maps, he knew where to dig, Yale Calzada says. He went back with us at 73 years old. When he went the first time he was 21. The team discovered several new specimens, dated to about 5,000 years ago, from San Marcos Cave. They applied shotgun sequencing to three cobs, extracting DNA and breaking it up into short fragments for sequencing. Computer software then reassembled these DNA snippets, eventually reconstructing more than 35% of the ancient maize genome. Yale Calzada's team identified eight genes influencing key traits as they wrote in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences this week. The cobs carried the modern variants of TB1, which simplified the plant's branching for easier harvest, and BD2, which helped boost the starch content and sweetness of the kernels. But the cobs had the decent variant of TGA1, which encloses the kernels in those hard sheets a sign that domestication was only partial. Meanwhile, 
archaeologist Nathan Wales of the University of Copenhagen and his colleagues discovered McNeish's original samples stored for 60 years in a museum in Andover, Massachusetts. He and his colleagues shotgun sequenced the genome of a 5,300-year-old cob called Tehuacan 162. Wales's team was able to sequence 21% of this cob's genome. Their results confirmed and complemented those of Yale Calzada's team. The museum Cobb also had modern variants of TV1 and BD2, as reported in Current Biology last week. But Tehuacan 162 also had a more modern variant of the gene TGA1, which partly released kernels from their rigid shells making them easier to eat. Wales's team also found a diocinta gene not seen by the Mexican team, their GL1, which makes kernels fall from the hob very easily. That's useful for wild plants spreading their seeds, but frustrating for humans trying to harvest them. These differences may reflect the fact that Tehuacan 162 came from a different population of mace, and show that domestication was still in progress in the valley, the researchers say. Yale Calzada was shocked at the team's similar results. I'm really amazed to see how convergent the results are, he says. This is unusual in paleogenomics where it's difficult to get good data from old DNA. This is encouraging. Robert Hard, an archaeologist at the University of Texas in San Antonio, agrees. It's remarkable how these studies support each other, he says. That's a good sign the future sequencing can fill in more details, he says. It's really important that we recognize the significance of transformations in maize, Blake says, adding that knowledge of how certain traits help maize adapt to drought and disease in the past could help save it from disasters in the future.